years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Well, that's the best it gets. My little humming and singing, that's the best it gets for the next two hours. Hi, everybody. It's Alex Bennett. It is the Ramble. Let's turn on the on the air light. There we go. Okay. And uh, that must mean we're on the air, right? Oh, man. Oh, man. I am, uh, I don't know. I just, you know, every night I come in here, and uh, usually on Fridays I had um, girlfriend, right, my wife, uh, be our kind of guest, and we would kind of sit here and chat back and forth, but she got pissed off at doing it, so now she doesn't want to do it anymore. So it's just me, and I don't have anything to put in here, so I then have to go ahead and talk for 20 minutes, and it's something I used to be able to do. You know, I used to be able to come on here. And uh, uh, just, you know, start riffing about stuff. And I just, I think I've lost that ability. I, you know, I, I was watching uh, this uh, thing with Steve Croft the other night on 60 Minutes. And uh, they, asked, she, uh, they asked him why, um, why he was leaving. And he said, I always admired guys who know when to leave the stage before it's over. Okay, while they're still in a, in a, at, at a decent point in their career, and then they just you know go on to other stuff, uh, or maybe nothing at all. But they know when to leave the stage, and uh, I've been debating that for the longest time. You know, I don't want to outstay my welcome in uh, in in broadcasting, podcasting, whatever you want to call it, because. I don't want to get so bad that everybody goes, have you heard Alex Bennett lately? Man, he really sucks. You know? I would prefer that people remember me uh, in my halcyon days when things were good and things were terrific and uh, uh, I, I had it all together. And I've just been feeling lately like I don't have it together anymore. That, like, uh, last night uh, at a certain point in the program, I said to myself... Um, Gee, I don't know if I've got it anymore. I don't know if it isn't time to leave the stage. You know, uh, there was a time when I when I did have it. You know, when I was I think uh, even a few years ago when I was on Sirius XM towards the end there, I really had my craft down. You know, I felt I had complete control of everything that I was doing. And last night I felt I didn't have that control anymore. I felt that I was so tired that I that I didn't. Uh, uh, I wasn't able to carry on a conversation. Now, my wife says it sounds fine to me, but it doesn't feel good to me, and and so I am am really considering retiring uh, from this business. Uh, uh, it doesn't mean I would end Gabnet. I would try and find somebody to take over this spot. You know, I would guide it and keep it together and so on. But in a you know, in a uh, administrative uh, capacity, uh, because I just don't know if I've got it anymore. I don't know if I have the ability to carry on a good conversation or to do an interesting, stimulating program. Uh, and so I, uh, I, I, I just don't, you know, I just don't know uh, what to do in that respect. Uh, I'm getting overly tired lately. Now, you see, I don't know if some of this doesn't have to do with depression, you know? I mean, I was at dinner tonight with a girlfriend, and uh, all of a sudden I felt lightheaded, like I was going to pass out. And I've just been feeling that way lately, and it's like I'm tired all day long, you know? I went out and I took a walk today. I took a, I walked a mile and a half. I walked out uh, to the Harlem Mirror here, which is about six blocks away, and then walked around the lake and then back, and that's about a mile and a half. And I thought that would, like, wake me up, and no, it didn't. It just made me, <laughs> made me drowsy. 
But anyway, so as I was doing the show last night, I went, you know, I just feel incapable because we, to begin with, we only had like about three people last night, uh, which sometimes happens. But uh, usually when I've had three people, I could still make a good show out of it. And last night, I just felt I couldn't carry it. I couldn't, I didn't have the strength, you know, and when one more person joined it, that's joined us, I think it was maybe Tom Yamaguchi. I, I, I breathed a sigh of relief, you know, because it took a little of the pressure off of me because uh, I just don't know if I'm capable of carrying on the kind of conversation that is needed when you're doing a talk show. And you see, I look, and I've got 19 minutes still to talk here, and I just, I just don't have the strength to do it. I just don't know what to talk about. But uh, so, uh, you know, I, I, I am considering leaving the stage. Um, uh, I, I, I don't want to get to the point where people go, isn't he pathetic? And, and I'm beginning to think I'm getting to sound pathetic. Uh, and I've always been very careful and, uh, of that. And I've told people, tell me when I'm that bad, okay? You know, I, I listen to, you know, I go back and I listen to Frank Sinatra. I, for Sinatra is my go-to music on my, on my iPhone. I basically play a lot of Frank Sinatra. Uh, uh, into my head uh, and uh, there are I can actually tell at what point in his life Frank recorded a particular song not because I know when the song was recorded because some of the stuff is in concert and he's doing old stuff and whatever but it's because I can hear how bad he got he got to a point where it was just embarrassingly bad uh, I saw one of his last you know, uh, when, when did I see him? Um, there was a comedian that he, uh, that he had on his shows, and I'm trying to remember who, uh, who the comedian was now. See, my mind, that's how my mind's going. And he invited me to see Frank Sinatra. He was at the Circle Star Theater. And in fact, you know, I can actually look up the date when that was. Uh, if I just type in Frank Sinatra, I did this one night, uh, one day, and uh, it came up, and it uh, at the Circle Star um, Star Theater. Okay, uh, let me see here. Let's see if it comes up. Uh, 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 um, uh, Circle Star Theater. Uh, uh, get uh, no set list. Oh, the set list of the concert at the Circle Star Theater. Okay, uh, this was. Um, in San Carlos, California, on November 13th, 1988. See, I got it here. And here was the set list. Come rain or come shine, please be kind, where or when, September of my years, luck be a lady, I guess I'll hang my tears out to dry, uh, Mac the knife, uh, they can't take that way from me for once in my life. One for my baby and one more for the road. I remember when he did that because that was one of his saloon songs. And Frank was so bad at this concert. Okay, well, how bad was he? Well, when he got to one for my baby and one more for the road, he lit up a cigarette, okay, and started puffing on it. I don't know if he was smoking at that point in his life or whatever, but he wanted the effect of Frank with the cigarette, right? And he... And uh, after he's through, and make one for my baby, one more for the road, and then he ends the song, and he throws the cigarette down on the ground and puts it out with his foot. Well, the stage was covered with a rug, okay? <laughs> and his foot missed the cigarette, but he didn't know it. And smoke started coming up from the stage. And Frank Jr., who was the band leader, I remember, looked over at him and said, Dad, the stage is on fire. And Frank, with his foot, put it out, okay? Uh, but that's how, what a pathetic, and, and the performance was pathetic. Then he's saying, let's see, uh, the lady is a tramp, my way, strangers of the night, and finishes off with his big closer, uh, the theme from New York, New York. Uh, and that is the, uh, the whole uh, set list uh, from that night that I saw him at the Circle Star. And I was supposed to meet him, and I didn't meet him because, and I've told the story before, he, uh, he died. Uh, he didn't die. Uh, his friend, uh, Fred, friend Jilly had died. 
uh, that day. And I was supposed to be introduced to him, but they just said, Frank doesn't want to talk to anybody. He's just so inconsolable because of the death of Jilly. But that concert I saw was terrible. I mean, he w really couldn't sing anymore. Uh, he had really outworn his welcome. And once every now and then, the light would hit him just right, and he would hit a note just right, and you got one brief second of Frank, of the Frank Sinatra you knew and loved. But, I mean, the fact I got to see him was fine, you know. Tom Dreesen, that was the comedian, by the way. His opening act was Tom Dreesen. He used Tom Dreesen for years. And Dreesen did my show, and Dreesen said, hey, you want to see Frank? And I said, sure. He says, come on by. I'll put you, like, in the fourth row, and, you know, you'll be able to see uh, Frank at uh, his very finest, right? And then I'll take you backstage and introduce you to Frank. Okay. I went, wow. You know. Well, none of that came to pass. And what was what was worse is that that's how I have to remember Frank Sinatra. <laughs> you know, not the way he was. I mean, my my father used to play with Frank at Cal Neva Lodge up in Lake Tahoe. And I was there when he was playing with Frank. But my father couldn't get me into the, uh, the state line room where he was playing uh, at Cal Neva because, um, and I think Frank was there and, and uh, Dean was there and Sammy was there. It was the Rat Pack. And, um, uh, but he couldn't get me in, so I couldn't see Frank perform at Cal Neva. Uh, and um, I, I kind of, I wish I had seen him then because then I would have had something really to remember, and then I could have told Tom Dreesen, you know, I really don't want to see Frank in his dotage, right? But Frank didn't know when to leave the stage. He knew when to leave the stage. He knew exactly when to leave the stage, and I'll tell you why he knew exactly when to leave the stage, because in about 1975, 74, he announced that he was quitting the business, and uh, uh, he was... Uh, he was he figured it was time was over. And he was still good. He was still good, but you could hear there was a little, you know, he was a little straining a little more. He was not, he didn't feel, felt he didn't have control of his pipes, as it were, of his instrument. And so he decided to just quit. And he quit. And he quit. They held a big concert, big farewell concert. Rosalind Russell was the, uh, was the MC. Uh, and uh, he did uh, like a set of maybe uh, 13, 14 songs like you just saw here, encapsulating his entire life and his career and the highlights of his career. And it was really, it, it, it was, a, it was it, if you've ever heard the concert, it was a good concert. It was a great concert, and it was goodbye, Frank has left the building. Now, that didn't mean he was quitting doing movies, or <clears throat> that he wouldn't uh, host a few TV shows or things like that, but he would just quit singing, all right? And so everybody went, bye-bye, Frank, and he was gone. He'd gone for about maybe two years, but he couldn't stand it. And he retrained his voice uh, because he found there were certain notes he couldn't hit any longer. Uh, you know, he didn't take good care of his voice. You know, I got to tell you, a guy like Tony Bennett, God bless Tony Bennett. When he was around, when Frank was around, he wasn't the best. But he slowly became the best over the years because he, he got better and better. In fact, I think Tony Bennett was at his best when he hit his 80s, okay? But he took care of his voice, and he didn't drink, and he didn't smoke, you know. But Frank smoked, and he drank, and he did everything that make the pipes go south, right? So by the time... 1974, 75 came along. He knew it was going. He couldn't hit the notes like he used to hit them. So in that two years off, he kind of retrained himself to use his voice again, but in a different way so he didn't have to hit those high notes or those low notes. And he came back as kind of Frank Light, as it were. And they, they had a whole campaign. The name of the album was uh, said it all. Old Blue Eyes is back. And he came back. And he worked. And he worked. And he worked, and he was terrible. He got worse and worse. I have a concert he did in Madrid 
where he starts out doing uh, night and song night and day, and he, he that first thing is night and day. See, I can do it. He he hit it so badly it was a complete clam, and it is maybe the one of the worst concerts I've ever heard. Now I also have a copy of the concert he did the next night in Milan, and he was better. I think a lot of it depended on the night. But as the years went on, it got worse and worse and worse. And if you want to hear him at his very worst, go listen to the Duets albums at the very end of his career. And there, he was just mailing it in. He went into the studio. People were being piped in there. Their vocals were being piped in from uh, all around the world by telephone. And it was it's just he's just horrible but he kept working and he kept doing the concerts and one of the reasons was he married barbara marx who was uh zeppo marx's wife i think he, she was zeppo marx's wife and she, I, I i don't think she was uh, um yeah i think she might have been zeppo marx's wife maybe gummo gummo wait a minute uh barbara marx let me hold on a second Bar uh, Barbara Sinatra. Let me. I say I gotta look this stuff up. I, I keep forgetting my uh, Barbara. I'll go Sinatra, and then it'll say who she was married to. Okay, Barbara Sinatra. Here we go. Uh, spouse Frank Sinatra. Zeppo Marx. I was right. It was Zeppo. Uh, Zeppo was the fourth Marx brother. Gummo was the fifth Marx brother, who you never saw in films because he quit by then and became an agent. Big agent in Hollywood. I think so did uh, uh, Zeppo later on as well. But he w she was married to Zeppo Marx, okay? And then she married Frank. And uh, she didn't like Frank not working because the money wasn't coming in, and she had very expensive tastes. And so uh, Barbara Marx kept him out on the road slavishly. Uh, and so he just got worse and worse and worse. And... Uh, you know, it it it, it it's kind of it was it was sad and sad to listen to. So what does this all go, all go back to? It all goes goes back to me saying, you know, there's a time when you leave the stage when when people will still remember you in a in a fond way rather than as some old doddering guy. Do you want to see Regis Philbin these days? No, that's why you don't see Regis Philbin. He knows that he can't be the Regis you know and love. Okay, but I'll tell you who won't quit, and it's embarrassing, is Larry King. I mean, Larry King is so bad now. How bad is he? So bad, I can't even watch him. I mean, it's just scary. And I don't want to be Larry King, okay? So when I have a night like I did last night where my mind, in the back of my mind, I'm going, I, I just have a hard time controlling this whole thing. I go, you know, maybe it's time to leave the stage. You know, maybe it's time to leave while I still, there's some people out there who still respect me, <laughs> you know. I, I, I know a lot of you don't respect me, but, you know. What, what are people writing? If you listen to your viewers and listeners, they tell you, they, they tell you topics, but you continue to ignore us and retell the same apartment lawsuit story. And yes, I'm a fan, that's why I care. Well, fuck you, Forbin. Um, let's see. Well, so he agrees. I should quit. Please show Marjorie so we know she's alive and held, uh, <clears throat> and, and held down by your massive ego. That's Forbin Colossus again. Mike Allen says, and what you need uh, is a three-week uh, vacation. Maybe that uh, will help you. I doubt it. Uh, I think it's good. But I get the feeling that Alex would rather make movies than have hopeless political conversations. Maybe he would discuss climate change to lighten it up. Unreal. Well, you see, some of these people are kind of agreeing with me, all right? I mean, Forbin seems to be saying quit, all right? So, uh, and, and, you know, uh, let me see here. And I, you know, if I tell the boring apartment story, it's only because uh, lately I had a, we had a, a development in the apartment story, and that was that they've moved the trial up two months, you know, and I, I'm just sick of it, you know. 
And of course, I'm going to talk about things that are happening in my life, and that's what's happening in my life. It's a pretty boring life I have now. That's the other part. I used to have great stories because I would do lots of things and meet lots of people, and I would have things to talk about, and I don't have anything to talk about anymore. What do I do? Oh, you know what I did? I walked around the Harlem Mirror today. Wow. You know, I would really love to do some exciting stuff. I, I, got, to, I got to get out of here. I really do. Anyway. Hmm. So, Forbin, you won't have me to kick around very much longer. Okay? So. So Frank, Frank did it his way. No, he didn't, really. Uh, or that piece of shit Stern won't quit. Well, um, Howard's still got a few good years left in him. I mean, he's not the Howard Stern he was, but, you know, and he is eventually going to become, and he kind of has become, an imitation of himself. But, uh, you know, all I'm saying is, is that do I need to stick around here and get insulted by Forbin Colossus? Uh do I need to, you know, sit around here and get, uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, no, she's, let's just see here. Forbin Colossus, tell your listeners and viewers, Mike Allen, Ryan Crossman. I think it's good. I get the feeling uh, he already read that. Ty, Tyson's Acosta, unreal. Sour puts 10 is saying, waiting for you for his nightly tech problems. Uh. Frank did it his way on that piece. Sir, okay, Forbes Colossus. Said, Forbes is saying, listen to your viewers about topics. For example, I'd love to see you do more bubs or veer off uh, uh, and invite Desmond Crisis. Why Desmond? Desmond Crisis, a guy I worked with for about five minutes, Forbin. Uh, I, I wouldn't even know where to find Desmond these days. Desmond was, um, I worked with him at CNET for a short time. And that was it. He never had anything really to do with my show, except occasionally I'd have him come on and talk to me for a couple of minutes. Uh, but, uh, you know, so fuck you, Forbin, with your Desmond crisis. Blow it out your ass. I don't, I, I don't really care. All right? So anyway, uh, be off and invite Desmond crisis on. Why? Why? So anyway, and also I have to put up with insults. Yeah, you know, on top of everything else, I you know I feel I'm losing it, and then I get the insults going. Yes, you are, you old fart. Okay, so maybe it's maybe it's time to take that long walk off a short pier. Uh, I'm going to open up the Skype lines now. It's getting too depressing reading the conversations over there. Maybe I should just black out the uh, chat, and I so it doesn't make me feel crappy. Anyway, I'll uh, open up. The lines are now open. The lines are now open. Okay, so you could you could call if you want to. Okay, if you don't want to, ah, eh, fuck you. I don't care. I don't care. Do do what you want to do. Uh, last night we had what four people tops, three for most of the show. You know, so I just am gonna wait for people to call in. And we will. Uh, we will wait for uh, people to suddenly say, hey, Alex, we, we want to talk to you. But anyway, so, you know, maybe it's, it, 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 there's time when it's time maybe to leave the stage. Here comes uh, Charlie Wallace. thing I like about Charlie, he calls so early, I don't even have to find him a, a, a place because he immediately falls right into his slot, which is the number three slot on the bottom. Uh, That's me. Good, good to see you, Charlie. How are you? Oh, here comes Jeff Stein. Let's see. Jeff Stein was, I believe, in one of those spots last night, too. So it's a question of, yeah, there he is. See, there he is. He pops up in the first place. See? Uh, and uh, now if we get, the, who do we have in the middle? I can't remember who we had in the middle. Oh, I think, oh, it was uh, it was our friend from uh, Kuala Lumpur. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Bree was third. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Bree was in the in the center square, but I don't think he'll probably call tonight. But we never know, you know. You never know. So how you doing, Charlie? Doing pretty good. So I'm ending a stressful week. Why was a stressful week? Because there were so many issues coming up with the umpires that that I've just been working my ass off all week. Really, we well, you you don't umpire anymore, right? No, uh, not on the field, but I just I, I do the uh, management stuff now. Yeah, uh, management. Yeah, 
And and uh, uh, these are what? Are these little league games? No, this is adult recreational softball. Oh, okay. Yeah, and so <clears throat> softball you pitch underhanded, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, why not? Why not just baseball? Why not hardball? What, what's wrong with the hardball? What? How does softball differ from? Outside of the fact the ball is bigger, softer, and you pitch it differently, but how do it, it couldn't you? Just, well, for one thing, umpires don't need as much equipment because the softer ball doesn't hurt as much as the hard ball. Right. So you have to have all the pads and stuff. But why so, would somebody play softball when they could play ba- baseball? I mean, they got the bat. You know, they only have to get a different ball, and you're playing baseball. Well, some of us. <laughs> Yeah, what, what, some of us can't hit a, a baseball at our age. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Well, see, I don't know that because I never played baseball, so do I give a, 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 you know, a hoot? Not really. Let's see here. We've been joined by Kevin. He would be hog rider. There he is. Okay. Pop him in there. Boom. There we go. Hi, Kevin. What? So, so anyway, hey, what, what, what you're saying is, Old men have to play with softer balls. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yep. <laughs> and girls. And girls. Well, it is kind of softball is always a girls game. I hate to say that to you, Charlie. Wow. Yeah. My grandma. That's fine with me. I love playing with girls. Why do they always let women play with softball? <laughs> this is like... <laughs> <laughs> why, why did women play with softballs? <laughs> You'll have to ask them. I mean, why yeah. can't, can't we? Can't, can't women play hardball? Let me tell you that the fast pitch softball is harder than baseball. If you ask me, I umpired both. It of is. Them. It but is. Isn't, but isn't the ball easier to hit? Well, except that the base, the the, the base, the pitcher's mound is much closer. It's only fifty feet away, and they're throwing the ball almost as hard. Really. Yeah, and, and, and it's, down nat- from, it's the natural the way to throw as well. Underhand wow. softball, yeah. fast pitch is the natural way to throw. Okay. But so you can throw it faster and accurate, and if you're a good pitcher, you can really screw with somebody. Did I ever tell you about the time they yeah. want me to throw out the first pitch at an Oakland A's game? Oh, yeah, I remember that. Well, I remember when you did it. Uh, where, did you go there? No, I didn't go, but I remember when you did it. Because I was a season ticket holder back then. Yeah, well, I I went out there uh, because Wally Haas was a friend of mine who yeah. owned the team, and he said, uh, well, what "Would you would you throw out the first pitch?" And I went, "Yeah, sure." So I get out there. And, you know, you think it's not going to be that big a whoop. You just throw the ball to to, to the home plate, right? <laughs> when you stand on that pitcher's mound, you suddenly realize how fucking far away that yeah. home base is. It's a mile away. It's a fucking mile away. And uh, so I did my be- I, I I took that ball, and I threw it. And I threw it as hard as I possibly could. I did make it to the home plate, and I then hit the umpire in the balls. <laughs> That's always, that's always a good one, yeah. 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 But I was so happy that I made it to home the home plate because I thought yeah. this is going to be the biggest embarrassment in history, you know, Bennett throwing out the first pitch. Uh, so it's, don't they sometimes, like, when the president doesn't, does he throw it from the stands or something? Isn't that what a, a president does? You know. Well, sometimes uh, they do, yeah. And the catcher but, will be standing in the... And the third base coach's box yeah. or something yeah. in case it. But I thought it was there, going to be there, no. Pick. There's people that'll 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 practice for two weeks before they, you know, and they know they're going to throw out the pitch. They'll they'll practice for two weeks to get the pitch right. Yeah. Well, nobody had me practice. Yes, Jeff. Yeah. Oh, talk, turn on your mic. Turn You're on, muted, you, Jeff. Yeah. Uh, senior Bush mm-hmm. was a great pitcher. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah, yeah, really? Yeah, he uh, uh, even uh, what uh, Bush uh, after nine eleven, he threw that pitch. Um, after the the nine eleven thing, they threw they showed it the other night, mm-hmm. and he threw a damn strike. Yeah, <laughs> he actually threw a really good pitch, right after nine eleven. 
Ah. At the uh, was it the Boston Yankees game? Was it? I think was, was that. But that was Bush Jr. You mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he he loved baseball. And in fact, they said that in, he didn't really want to be president. He wanted to, he be, wanted the, to be commissioner. He wanted to be the commissioner of baseball. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's exactly. Right. I don't know why he didn't apply for that job after he was president. You know, but he really loved baseball. Just loved baseball. Yep. Uh, what I, I like it too. What I love, what, what yeah. I've often said I love most about baseball is its perfect geometry. That those bases are in just the right places and the right distance from each other to make the jo- the game perfect. If those bases were an inch either way, it would change the whole nature of the game. And that it, geometrically, it is an absolutely perfect game. So, so, you know, so I, I always like, I, I, I always like baseball. I'm not a big, you know, it's not like I'm a baseball fan. I couldn't tell you who's leading in the National League or the American League. Uh, I couldn't even tell you who's in the American League and the National League. But I do love the game of baseball. I love what it represents to America. I love it, it, its romance, its history. You know, I love Ken Burns' baseball documentary. You know, that well, that's, just, that's what's nice about it is that you don't have to follow it. You can just go to it and enjoy it. Enjoy it. Yeah. It just, it's a nice day out in the sun, and it's very pastoral, and you're sitting around a pasture while people are playing a game. Yep. You know, and nothing much happens. Nothing. It's a very slow game. Nothing much happens. But if when it finally does, it's, like, really exciting. And yeah, then you go it's a back, brain game, too, then yeah. You, then you go back to nothing happening again. You know what's cool is they're they're doing the uh, the uh, Field of Dreams game this year, and that that guy actually built the uh, the Field of Dreams yeah uh, field out there, and they're actually going to have a uh, was it I think I think it's the Yankees in Boston or somebody who's going to play out there this year. Wow! And they're going to have an actual baseball major league baseball wow. game out there. So the guy built the built the uh, built the uh, field. Yeah, they're gonna the outfield's going to be a cornfield and everything. So if you if you build it, it will, they will come. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's going to well, be a hot ticket. Oh, no, it sounds it sounds wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of a romantic I, kind of thing. You know, I I love that movie. You know, um, they have this whole speech in there about. Costner's father having thrown the ball to him, you know, and him catching the ball, and that the the greatest kind of uh, relationship he had with his father was when his father would pitch to him and he would catch the ball, and I'm yep. and I'm crying and weeping through this whole thing. I really yeah. am. I'm just I'm I'm like a, crying like a little girl, yeah. and, and and I can't figure out why because my father never threw a baseball at me in my life, you know, <laughs> my father. You know, he maybe tried to teach me the violin, but no, he never he never pitched. Yet I'm crying over this because it's yeah. there's, there's, something, there's just something about it. That was a beautiful movie. That was a great movie. Yeah, you know, I loved it. So anyway, I'm really tired tonight again. I don't know what it is. I got eight hours sleep. There must be something wrong with the way I'm sleeping. You know, I've got my watch, and my watch tells me how much I slept during the night. It's not like I have sleep apnea. I don't wake up at all. You know, I'm out like a light. So, so come to think of it, does does the Apple Watch tell you give your night your sleep uh, pattern? Yeah, it tells you how much uh, how much. Uh, well, I actually use the 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 uh, iPhone uh, for that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Geez, do I have the iPhone here? Yeah, I have it here. Like for instance, I use the iPhone, but the watch sends it the information. Okay, yeah. uh, although I can do the information on the watch, but why be redundant? Right, so right, he, right. here was last night. Uh, let me let me go to the whole thing. See, there's the whole. Yeah, hmm. the reason I ask is I've been I've been contemplating hmm. buying a watch for well, it, several it, reasons. It says, for instance, I did a total of seven hours and twenty nine minutes of sleep. That's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. Restful seven hours and twenty two mil- minutes. Restless, seven minutes. Awake, zero minutes. So I <laughs> obviously like a log. I, I obviously don't have. I don't obviously don't have sleep apnea, 
Uh, and my best sleep was from 2.57 a.m. to 3.51 a.m. I have my best sleep when I start at night. Um, you know, but, oh, here comes Patrick. Okay, let me see here. Oh. Uh, Patrick, uh, let me let me uh, go put Patrick into the mix here. Darth uh, Darth Pat, yeah, he always they always show up in the same place. Okay, and uh, I uh, I now go to that and oh we have two of uh, we have two of uh, of uh, <coughs> Kevin. So let me get rid of him. Okay, so that we don't have to. There we go. Okay, so we don't have too many Kevins at one time. Because that's where Kevin was maybe last night. Did you call last night? You called last night. You were the one who saved my ass. No, no, I, I didn't make it because I was oh. getting tires put on my wife's car. Oh, oh, okay. Hello, Patrick. Hi. 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 Did your father ever throw a baseball at you? Uh, no, but when I played baseball, mm. I had one uh, being right in my nuts, and I was like, <laughs> oh. afraid. And thank goodness it hurt, but not everything was fully developed. So, you know, it was the thing. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. It, well, yeah you uh, never forget You never forget a ball to the balls. No. 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 So apparently you weren't playing baseball kind of in a professional sense or an, or an amateur sense, <clears throat> because if you were, you'd be wearing a cup. Yep. Yeah. 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 Uh, sort of. <laughs> what do you mean, sorta? <laughs> yeah, you wore one when you when you wore it. Well, I've never taken a big wallop to the testicles, ever in my life. Mainly because I I move fast. You're enough. lucky. I move <laughs> fast enough when the woman tried to do it, but you know. Uh, <laughs> no, but I, I I I I've never I've never taken a big blow to that part of my body. I've I've had my testicles kind of like get hung up on something like, you know, pants or whatever and go, ow, oh, ooh, ow, oh, that's not fun. You know. Alec, you beat all of us anyway. You burned your dick on an oven. I mean, that's... that's <laughs> <laughs> oh, how'd you do that? Well, not so, much, not so much on the oven, but on the oven grill part, you know, the, the, the thing. <laughs> yeah. The, the, yeah. Well, I mean, Kevin and I and, and Jeff, I'm sure you've taken one that are nuts and, and Charlie... Yeah. That, that's nothing compared to burning your dick <laughs> like your... I have never well, I, I I agree with you about it. There's nothing like burning your dick. Uh, having gone through it, let me let me explain to people what happened. And I'm going to try and and I'm I'm just going to be very honest about this. Uh, I was cooking ribs for dinner, in the oven. Okay, so I had the thing in the oven, right? You know, and uh, and the then ribs? it 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 my my I do slow cook, so it takes a couple hours. And every now and then you have to go in and you have to turn the things over and you have to, like, you know, tend to them. And I, was, I had nothing to do that evening because I was just making these ribs for myself. And uh, I'm in the bedroom and I went, what the fuck? And I put on a porn film and I started jerking off. <laughs> so I got a hard on. And now I suddenly remember <laughs> I've got to turn the ribs. So I go to the oven, naked, Alex. naked, and I pull the, you know, the, what do you call it? What do you call it? The uh, grill, yeah. the grill out, yeah. you know, and it touches oh, my shit. dick. Oh. And that's stainless steel, and that hurts. And I suddenly at that moment said to myself, I think I, just, I just think I fucked up royally. Okay, so now I'm figure, trying to figure out, because it doesn't hurt initially. You know, you just burn it. Yeah. And I'm trying to think, what can I do to help this out so that it doesn't get bad? And I'm thinking, I guess if I put butter on it. Oh, I, shit. Uh, <laughs> it will, that, that's the old days. <laughs> that will make it better. Burns. Well, actually, the answer is ice. But oh. I, I didn't think ice. I thought butter. And I yeah, guess I well kind of—I guess I was kind of basting my dick, is what I was <laughs> doing. Might as well put some oil on it and fry it, you know. And I, uh, um, uh, by the way, we just—we lost a lot of people. Wow, this... <laughs> they're in pain. 
just just discussing that, we, we lost a lot of people. Well, fuck you then. I, I don't <laughs> care. Anyway, so I, um, um, I, I then didn't know what to do, so I just, you know, ate the ribs. Uh, <laughs> Well, I mean, I had to eat them. If I was going to suffer for them, I wanted to eat them. Okay. So now, initially, you don't feel anything, right? And then suddenly, slowly but surely, things start getting worse and worse, and all of a sudden you start seeing that you're developing a blister, a little burn there, and then a blister, and it's... Um, and and I, I, you know, I don't know what to do about this, and I'm not going, I'm not going to a hospital, okay? Because... <laughs> Because I'm going to have to explain what happened, you know. And then I know oh, yeah. them. They're going to call the in. will have a ball with this They're one. going to call in other people and say, look what we got here. Yeah. You know, so yeah. I'm not going to the hospital. So that night I go to sleep. And I wake up the next morning, and I'm in, I'm in pain, okay? Mm -hmm. So for a few days I'm in pain, but then things get better. It starts slightly to heal. Now, here's the problem. If, you, if I burn my hand, okay, uh, uh, just uh, the next day it would be bad. The day afterwards would probably still be bad. By the third day, it would start healing, and it's outside. It's in the air, and it's healing. But when you've got something, a sore in your pants, there's no way it's going to get any air unless you just walk around with your dick out, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this thing will is not healing, right? It would kind of heal during the day, but then it, at night I would go to, oh, I know what it would do. It wouldn't heal during the day, but at night it would heal because I would sleep naked and then it would heal. But the problem with that was one night I slept on my stomach and I woke mm. up in the middle of the night and I suddenly realized I, I suddenly turned in my sleep, and, ah! and it had adhered itself to the to the to the linen. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it pulled the scab off, and now I'm yeah. bleeding like a stuck pig in bed. I mean, this ah. this went on for like the curative part of this took three months. All right. In the meantime, I wasn't getting laid. Okay. And and if I jerked off, I had to like jerk off around the the burn. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, it was it was it it was a terrible thing, and no wonder everybody left the program when I started telling that story. <laughs> yeah, but but um, it, for for quite a while, when I would go out with women who had heard the story on the air, because of course I turn anything that happens to me <laughs> into fodder for the air, right? Uh, when they would sleep with me, they go, "Can we see where the sore was, where the burn was?" <laughs> And I actually had a little scar there. Yeah, yeah. I had a little scar. Well, it finally went away I from, from rubbing it a lot. But, I mean, it, went, <laughs> the, the, it finally went away. But they would actually ask, ask to see the scar. Can I see the scar? You know, I go, look, see? And it was rather pretty scar. It was kind of like very light strip in the on the head of the penis. But Did you ask them to kiss it and make it better? Uh, <laughs> uh no, not really. <laughs> I didn't have to ask. Uh, so anyway, that, that's my I burnt my penis story, and I, that maybe that's the last time I'll ever tell it. Okay. So. Oh man, that's hilarious. Yeah. Not really, but. Huh? <laughs> well, it's it's in retrospect, it's absolutely hilarious, you know. And I can go back and laugh at it, but when it happened, man, I just went, oh, I, I think I did something wrong here. You know? Yeah. yeah. I, when I, you burn your, you know, I burned my finger on the stainless yeah. steel grill, and it, yeah. it's hot. Yeah. And you're right. It doesn't, it doesn't, you know, feel like anything for a while, and then all of a sudden, yeah. you look down, and you got this nice little line, and you know exactly what happened. Well, if I... Exactly. If, because you stunned all the nerves. If, I, like, had, yeah. if I had just put pants on... You know, uh, but no, I had to go uh, uh, naked to the <laughs> oven. You know, uh, it's kind of like, like, like they have oven mitts. You should have put see. a dick mitt on. Uh, a, a dick mitt. Let, let's see here. Where where, where is? Uh, wait a minute. Where is? I don't see Tony's 
thing here. Hold on a second. Oh, I, I see this. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Cancel. Now let me double click. Okay. Now let me see if I can find Tony. Now there's Tony. Okay. Now I have to find his uh, his thing. And uh, there we go. There we go. There's Tony. Hello, Tony. How are you? What's happening? Pretty good. I, okay. Not much. I, I was I wasn't really mad uh, with that debate last night. We're talking how about they, my how, dick getting burnt, and you're calling up about the debate. Oh. <laughs> Boy, is that out of context. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, I, I, I heard you talking about the Sinatra before. I heard the beginning. But I didn't hear the dick. What happened with your pee-pee? <laughs> oh, no, don't tell it again. <laughs> well, you I really was got- book making these uh, ribs. Yeah, everybody, you can go somewhere else again. We're back down to 20. <laughs> Boy, gee. Come on, folks. You can listen to this story. Oh, fuck you. you. Uh, what? That Tony just left. I think his mom called. Tony asked me a question and then he leaves. I had to get my charger. Hold on. I'm listening. I had to get the charger and that, and the that, and, and that <laughs> Tony, is how I burnt my penis. <laughs> what happened? You were by the oven? I just told the story again while you were off there. I'm sorry. You didn't hear that? No, it's, it's was too really, long a was story to tell. Here. Just don't ever make ribs naked. Okay. Uh, that's I made the, broccoli, but I, was in my, I cook in my pajamas all day now that I'm home. <laughs> I love that. I get dressed only when I got to go out. You never get out of your bathrobe, right? Only when I have to go to the store. Then I, I actually walk around. I have a lot of pajamas. So right. I just, when, I get, when I have to go to the post office, I get dressed. I like sitting in my pajamas all day sometimes. The, you know, the, re- go out. the only reason I work out on some level, okay... And I don't, I'm not working out as much as I used to, uh, is that uh, it forces me to shower. <laughs> if, get, if I don't, oh, if I, I don't work out, I don't shower. So I go down, I pedal around, I come back, I got to shower because I'm sweating. Today I took a walk around the Harlem Mirror. I'm sweating and smelling, and so I took a shower. But if I don't work out for a week, I'm sorry. I, you know, I'm looking like uh, I'm looking at like Howard Hughes. Uh, <laughs> the, plus, the, the great thing about doing this show, even though I have a high def camera here, this is a 4K camera I'm using here. Um, uh, not the one you guys are seeing me on, but the other one uh, is is that for some reason you never see when I've got like five days growth. You know, it doesn't seem to show up, so I feel I don't really have to, you know. And I, I do put, uh, I have shorts on right now, but, you know, I will not work in my underpants while I'm doing my show. I just, <laughs> yeah. Um, I've, lear- I've learned to put pants on after that other incident I was talking about. I would imagine that'd yeah. be scary. Okay, so you watched the debate last night. What yeah. did you want to say about the debate, Tony? Well, I was watching like bits and pieces of it. You know, they really were making him feel old. That one guy made, like he kept saying, oh, you forgot what you said. I mean, they were just trying to confuse him. I really thought that was low class. I well, was like, he looked like a scumbag, that guy, the other guy. I was like, really? Who was that? That was Joe like B- Castro. Castro. Yeah, I was oh, like, God. really? That's what you're doing. Well, I, 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 but I, but I, but I do think it's a, uh, it's a, 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 and as someone who is older, okay, it is somewhat um, um, telling that Biden couldn't remember what he had said, you know, and that, you know, there's a lot of feeling that Biden's maybe just a little too old to be. What is he? Eight, uh, uh, Ninety, uh, <laughs> seventy-seven now. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, um, I, seventy-seven. Hey, hey, God, folks, I'm I'm seventy-nine, and I know when I was seventy-seven, I wouldn't want you voting for me for president. You know, <laughs> I couldn't. You know, I couldn't do the job. And I, 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 wouldn't you agree, Jeff? I mean, he's too old for me. Listen, Trump's too old, but tr- <laughs> but Trump doesn't yes. work. Trump doesn't work very hard, so he can he That's can fake it. You know. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I, I was turned off though, Biden, because I didn't, I didn't, I just didn't like it. I thought it was like they had no substance, really, the way he was talking the other guy. I just thought it was like a bully in a schoolyard where they were trying to confuse him. Well, I don't know. But, 
It's like I wouldn't vote for any of them now, the way they would treat me. If I was Biden, I would just say, I don't want to run anymore. What well, do I need this nonsense? Well, you had the Kamala Harris thing during the first debate in which she went after Biden. And somehow they took that cue that you'll, you'll make some points with the audience if you go after Biden and savage him. And, you, and, and that's what I think Lynn Castro was topics, doing. Though. They're going off on his age, though. Well, he's really the way I, think, I, I think I got to tell you, I mean, and as someone who is that age, around that age, older than that age, then I understand, you know, that there, uh, I don't think a man that old should be president of the United States. Okay? In fact, wouldn't that make him the oldest president ever? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think so. How do you feel, Charlie? How do you feel about Biden's age? I don't really care so much about age, but the way he can handle things, the way he can carry himself, and he just carries himself old. Yeah. But here's a question that I pose to you. Ready? He's only Trump's, what, three years in office? How come nobody was up in office that Obama picked him as his VP? He was only a heartbeat away from the presidency. I didn't hear anything about age when Obama had him. Well, yeah, but he wasn't yeah, that but old. he was 10 years younger. He was 10 yeah, years younger. But, yeah. What, three years? All of a sudden, three years, he's doddering? Well, Obama? Yeah. I mean, I don't have a problem well, with his age. I, I'll tell you, three, at, that, at this age, and Jeff will tell you this, too, at this age, three years is a lot. You can but have... You really think he's really... Some, you see a big... I don't see a big difference in Joe Biden. Oh, I do. I absolutely do. Really? Yep. Maybe I didn't look at him close enough. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I just I didn't I didn't like but it. What, but would he be your bet? Would he be the guy you want, person you want to run for president? I mean, if it's going to be Trump, I really wouldn't have a problem with him in office. Because I think Trump's no, a no. It's a question of trouble being in office. But of all those people that were on that stage last night, he's your first choice. I think he would be right Excuse now. Excuse me. I, I, I don't know. My pants. I don't are like the other up. ones. I mean, Beto's okay, but. I don't really. I think I would pick Biden really right now over the other ones because no one's really jumping. How at about me. Elizabeth Warren? No, I don't like her. Why? I I just don't. She rubs me the wrong way. I don't know what it is. There's just something about but her. She, and it's not because she's a woman. So what would it I take, just don't like her? What would it take for her she's to rub you the angry, right way? Like you said. Remember you said she's always mad. It's like my crazy aunt who's always mad. You don't want to see a Thanksgiving. That's all. Well, you can't wait to go home because you can't, you, you want to, it's like, my mother's like, don't say nothing stupid. I can't wait to get out of here. She just seems like she's ready to rip. Like you, you said, it, Alex, she's always mad at everybody. I didn't like. say she was always mad at everybody. Who was the one you said that was mad all the time? I don't know. It wasn't her. Oh, I forgot who it was. So maybe maybe no, that was I, Phil. In, in the beginning, I didn't warm up to uh, Elizabeth Warren because she is not a lot warm about Elizabeth Warren. Okay. Uh, but... As I heard her speak, the intelligence with which she speaks impresses me. You know, uh, the, uh, the pro uh, you know the, the fact that she explains things very well and makes them easy to understand for people who don't exactly get these concepts that she's trying to put across. She does a very good job of it. You know. Now the she question. Stands up for the little guy. What What did you say, Charlie? <laughs> She stands up for the little guy. She doesn't take all this crap from these rich people. Yeah. Banks yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Yes, Jeff. Yeah. I, the one thing I always find very interesting about her is that she's willing to sit down and, and answer the question. So many people who are trying to be president for the Democrats do not want to answer a question clearly. She'll say, this is what happened when I was 23 years old and I just graduated from law school and I realized I never want to be a lawyer in, in about three weeks. Yeah. And therefore I quit. Yeah. Nobody else would have the balls to tell you that, but that's what happened to her. Yeah, well, you know, I, I have warmed up to her, and I, I also have warmed up to the idea that you say, well, you know, it all boils down to one question that everybody asks, who can beat Trump, all right? 
That's a good and, question. And, and I, and I, and, well, wait a minute, but I think a good question. It's a the, the only question, really. You know, you, you, uh, no, I think, but the fact of the matter is that I think she could take Trump on. I think she could put him in his place in a debate, for instance. I, I, I think she could kind of make mincemeat out of him because she takes no prisoners, and that's a good thing. Uh, I, I think Trump would not know how he knew how to handle Hillary, you know, crooked Hillary and, you know, stalk her like a shark at that debate and things like that, you know. Uh, and, uh, well, you know and I'm telling you, if Hillary had turned around and said, quit doing that, it's creepy, she would have won creepy. the election. You know, he was he, right behind her, remember? I was like, what is he yeah, doing? Don't yeah. even go in the bedroom. Or yeah, it was, it was I, I could hear the Jaws music in back of him. Yeah. yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Alex, boom, boom, the guy who held, the, the guy who holds that when he was doing that, shouldn't he have told him, you got to sit in your seat, you got to go somewhere? I mean, what are you doing? Well, they allowed to do that, like walk around? Well, that was one of, Well, that was, wasn't that one of those debates? It was a town hall style debate where they stood up, you know, and they could walk around like that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they were awesome. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, that was creepy. That was really creepy. But uh, Hillary didn't call him on it. Hillary was, she was too hungry to be president, yeah. you know? So everything she did was was uh, initiated by that certain desperation. And I think that's the problem. Uh, and and she was, uh, she was just, uh, uh, she was a terrible candidate. But, but 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 Elizabeth Warren, I, I as I watch her, I see that she could at least hold her own against Trump in a debate. Uh, anybody disagree with me on that one, Patrick? I've I've never watched any of the debates, so I mean, I've heard her talk on occasion, but I mean she's well spoken, so I guess that a step up from Trump. Yeah. If, um, but I, I don't really know if she'd be able to debate him or not. I would assume so. Um, and and the thing is, all she or anybody else have to do is look back at the fuck up that Hillary did, the way that she ran her campaign, and then just do everything differently. Yeah. And like like you said, with with Elizabeth Warren, if if Trump would have start walking around, Warren. It probably already been told if he were to do that and you're the candidate, make sure you put him in his place because Hillary didn't and it made her look weak. Mm -hmm. And don't assume that you're the president, which is the other thing I think with Hillary, yeah. is that she, was, yeah. that she was going get to the, get the presidency. Yeah. So, um, well, she did technically, she won, I mean, from a, from a popular standpoint. Uh, yeah, she but won. I think her attitude. Um, like, you know, I, I look I, when I when I voted for Hillary, I held my nose. Right. You know, you say that, yeah. it was a reluctant vote on my part. How many? How about you, Jeff? Same thing. Same thing. How about you, uh, uh, Charlie? No, I didn't hold my nose. I love Hillary Clinton. Really? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. How about yeah. you? How about you, Kevin? I went. I didn't vote for. Who did you vote for? Uh, nobody. No, you didn't vote. No, I voted, but I'd rather not say. <laughs> you, you didn't, I, I didn't vote for either one, anybody in the parties. I oh. voted third party for the other guy. Yeah. Who was the other guy? Who was the other guy again? Me and my brother voted for him. I forgot his name now. I forgot, too. I think it was Alfred E. Newman, wasn't it? I should have wrote your yeah, name. I wrote in Mickey I Mouse. Actually put it for the I I don't know why I remember. Well, you know, here, here's what bothers me about elections. Uh, I would have a tendency. It was a wasted vote. Let I would, me just I would have a tendency to like voting a lot more, okay, uh, if um, uh, there was a, a place on the ballot that said no vote, okay, and then if no vote won, You'd have to rehold the election. <laughs> that would be I would have a problem with that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, because no. I, I don't like the idea that I go into a voting booth and basically I have a choice between two people. In fact, do you know that in primaries now here in the United States, 
on the uh, on the Republican side. There are several states that say they're not going to hold a primary because uh, uh, Trump should be considered the uh, the nominee. And yet there are people. There are what three other people running against Trump? Yeah. And uh, you know. Uh, it would just be it, it would be nice if he had to go into each of those states and fight for everybody's vote and he's he, he doesn't want to you know so the, these states are saying oh we're not going to run a primary now by the way they don't have to run a primary there's no law saying you have to have a primary primary is simply a function of being able to figure out who your delegates from that state are going to vote for at the convention in fact, you're voting for electors. You're not uh, uh, you're voting for delegates. You're not voting, um, you know, conscience. Um, it's it's terrible. But anyway, um, uh, all I'm saying is I would love to be able to have a no vote thing. So that if you people if no vote wins, then you got to hold the election over again. Or if let's put it this way, if no vote, if neither party gets fifty percent because of the no vote thing, uh, then they've got to do the election again. I don't want to see another election like we had last time. I, I, I hate the, uh, the electoral college. Why, why with all the things that Democrats are doing in Congress uh, with this impeachment, which is never going to happen, okay, uh, why don't they spend their time trying to do away with the electoral college? That might help. Yeah. Yes, Patrick. Because remember, a number of them ran on we're going to impeach Trump. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, that is where they are trying to uphold their end of the bargain. And I find it very interesting that um, what's his name, Nadler and Pelosi seem to be at odds over yeah. what's actually happening. You know, Pelosi saying there's not going to be impeachment proceeding, and Nadler is saying we're going to start the investigative process next week. So well, that, here, here's my question. That's going to screw everything up for them. It's going to, it's going to implode on them. See, Nancy yep. Pelosi is right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, excuse me. I'm having to adjust myself here because for some reason my underpants are riding up on me. <laughs> now I feel better. Um, Sure, the oven's off. Yes, yeah. right. Uh, you you, some, no, uh, you're, you're right about you know. I mean, Pelosi's right. I mean, at this point, to even deal with the idea of butter. impeachment, oh. what? What? Put some butter on it. It'll make you feel comfortable. <laughs> My mother used to go slide around. Yeah, I, right. I, 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 I it, it, because of how much butter I had to use, I, I decided to start using margarine. Okay, you know. <laughs> I can't believe it's not butter. Yeah. By the way, when you're at Costco, be sure to get yourself 20 cubes of uh, butter. I need it. You know. Okay. A five-gallon tub. Yeah, right. I was, treating, I was treating my penis like it was a corn cob. Anyway. Uh, you're never going to hear the end of that. We're never going to hear the end of that story, are we? No. Anyway, so uh, where was I? Oh, I'm just I want to go to sleep. Anyway, uh, where was I? Uh, uh, you were saying Nancy Pelosi's right. Nancy Pelosi's right in that, it, let's say we started right now with it going full force into impeachment. Would we be able to get it done by the time the election rolls around? I don't think so. So it's totally impractical. Plus, it will give Trump a pity party. Yep. Okay, and it will get those... Republicans who absolutely love him out in full force. And right now, I think he's got a good chance of losing because he is just does not have the poll numbers to support winning. All right? Yes, Patrick. And the, the thing with Pelosi, um, with knowing that this isn't going to happen, mm -hmm. she, I don't remember if I actually heard her say these words or maybe it was somebody, uh, a pundit, but... Nancy seems to be taking this, this stance at this point because it's so late in the game yeah. that the American people vote him out, and that's a better chance. Like you said, there's a good chance he could lose. So that is a better strategy 
than trying to go for impeachment. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, if they want to do impeachment, they need to start this shit. Yeah. Long well, time well, ago. well, he he go he goes to these uh, these uh, uh, what can we call it? the these pre campaign stops that he does, where he sells out these halls, these these arenas. Okay, uh, sells them out. Nobody's selling tickets. He, uh, people show up for him, and he thinks that this is a sign of popularity. Well, I got to tell you, there are people lined up around the block for a Popeye's chicken sandwich too. You <laughs> yeah. know. I love Popeyes. You know, uh, and um, by the way, I saw I went by the Popeyes. There's a sign outside that says the chicken sandwich will be back uh, because they ran out of buns. That's what happened. Well, I was going to say they have a bring your own bun thing going. <laughs> that would be now. funny. Bring a bun and we'll stick some of the chicken <laughs> tenders in the middle of it for you. Yeah, going what? Why was everybody going? By the way, let's just for a second. Moving off topic, what was that whole deal with that chicken sandwich? Were people really that crazy about it? I mean, Popeye's is damn good chicken, but for crying chicken. out loud, you know. All it was was their chicken tenders between two pieces of bun. Yes, Patrick. It's like you can't have it. Like the, I remember the McRib was good. I mean, they used to take yeah, it away. Yeah, and well, I, Patrick had his hand up. Patrick. I, I've got a uh, friend who is a minister, and... When that happened, what has it been? Two weeks? Oh, oh, it, oh, it, Charlie uh, also has his hand up as well, but finish what you were saying, Patrick. Uh, about two weeks ago, I think, is when they rolled that out. Yeah. And my, my friend went on Facebook, and he said, mm -hmm. some of churches are starting to preach about the, uh, the Chick-fil-A versus Popeye's. Please don't. <laughs> And so, yeah, I mean, it must be important to a, a lot of people because if it's hidden in the churches. There are people getting into gunfights at Popeye's over getting a, a chicken sandwich. Yes, you, uh, Charlie, I'm sorry I didn't see you with your hand up. Yeah, it, it, this was about the impeachment thing. Um, you have to remember that Richard Nixon's approval rating with the public was over 60% when the impeachment process started. Mm -hmm. By the time all the information came out in public, he was down to in the teens. Trump is starting in the 30%. Once, he just, just people that don't even realize there was negative stuff about Trump in, in, in the Mueller report. Once all this information gets out and gets in front of people, his, you don't have to complain the process, My, all they have to do is get the information out there, and he'll get voted out of yeah, office anyway. Ch Charlie, like Charlie, you're a very smart person, and I say that in all honesty. You're intelligent, you pay attention to the news, you understand what's going on. When we're talking about a Trump voter, we're not talking about that kind of person. They want their stuff fed to them in giant, simple chunks, and that's it. And they're not going to absorb all that material. From a, from a, from an impeachment, and so what, they, what they're going to get out of an impeachment is all oh, those fucking Democrats are out to get our guy, and it's only going to make them more rabid about voting for him. What you got to base do, is only like 30, 33 percent. We he can't win with thirty three percent. Well, yeah, but what he's got to have the independents, and the independents aren't that way. They don't worship. Listen, Trump like I that. think there's a good shot he could lose if the Democrats did nothing. OK, uh, uh, but uh, there was somebody here that wrote that uh, uh, he'll win in 2020. No, I don't think that's a, a far, far gone conclusion, because to begin with, uh, he didn't have the popular vote last time. All you got to do is turn a couple of those electoral states around and you've got to win for the Democrats. All right. And he hasn't done anything while he's in office to make himself so fucking damn popular that everybody is going to like rally around the president. So he is a beatable candidate, but there are a couple of things the Democrats have got to do. Number one, quit running against Trump. You know, this constant Trump bashing does not help, it, because every time you mention Trump, people get the idea, oh, he must be important. He must be doing something if they're talking about him so much. Don't talk about Donald Trump. Donald Trump dies in a vacuum. There's no question about it in my mind. 
You know, I've said that about the press. Ignore him. You know? He's always is a baby crying to be picked up, you know? Uh, so if the Democrats instead say, here's what I'm going to do if I'm president. Here are the problems we've got in our country that need changing. Here are things that are going amiss that we've got to reverse, okay? And then explain it in good, easy to answer, easy to understand terms for the general public, and I think a Democrat could win. But if they go out there and everything is Trump this, Trump that, Trump, 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 Trump you're going to lose. Am I, am I right, Patrick? You seem to agree with me on that. Well, yeah, I mean, I think a good strategy, even though Tony doesn't like it, is right now is when they have to go after each other to thin the herd to find out who has the medal to be president. And then that person, then, or even if they knock it down to two people, at that point, you can start going in on Trump because it's more realistic that you are running against him. Right now, these people are not running against Trump. They're running against each other so that they can have the nominee to be the Democratic uh, nominee for president, not to beat Trump yet. They got to get there first. Well, right, I mean, now, right now, it's a giant game show is what it is. You know, it's it, 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 it's no different than some of the uh, competitive uh, reality shows that we have. And and it's being run that way. Uh, and my question is, my uh, here's my question. Who, it, it, we're, we're finally getting to a point where I think it's in, uh, in uh, Vermont that we have the first, uh, not Vermont, but uh, uh, New Hampshire, yeah. that we have the first um, vote. Uh, is Iowa first with the uh, with the caucus or the caucus, yeah. yeah they're first with the caucus and then the first uh, uh, primary is in uh, New Hampshire and that's all in January okay so we're we're getting closer to that now by the time we get to January who is not going to be in that group of uh, group of people running in other words there are going to be some people falling by the wayside pretty soon here who's that going to be? I think we're going to see Elizabeth Warren standing at the end. I think we're going to see Bernie standing at the end. I think we're going to see, um, um, uh, 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 what's his name, uh, 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 Biden standing at the end. Uh, uh, but Castro who else? will be out. Castro will be out? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, who else? Um, Kobachar will be out. I think so, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, ben, uh, 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 Lee, is that uh, Beto O'Rourke, I think, will be out. Yeah, I think he'll be out. I think Buttigieg will still be in, though. Yeah. Buttigieg may be still be in there, yeah. Yeah. Well, nobody can remember his name to say leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, um, yes, Patrick. You guys might have more insight into this than I do, but they narrowed it down to 10 for the debate last night. Mm -hmm. Now, still some hangers-on that are that didn't make it last night. Mm -hmm. yeah. What are the possibilities that one or two of them may surge after somebody else drops out out of those 10, and you're going to have another debate for two or three where you're still going to have a half dozen or 10 uh, candidates running because some of them that are at the bottom now, mm -hmm. you know, they won't be able to start speaking and being heard more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so that, I, that could happen. So, I mean, do you guys think that that's a possibility, that you're going to be stuck with 10 people for a while? Yep. I, I'm, well, I'm it's wondering. going to happen. There's going to be those holes that are going to well, get filled. Well, the next debates are over two nights. Uh, and I can't remember who's holding them. Um, maybe the New York Times or somebody like that? I don't know. But anyway, uh, th th that's over two nights, and they just don't know. They, they think they might be able to winnow it down to one night, but it depends on how many people drop out. But you've still got, for instance, Andrew Yang, who, by the way, has my vote because I can be bought, okay? Yeah, uh, me too. You know, um, uh, hey, he wants my vote. He wants to give me $1,000 a month for the rest of my life. Hey, a Andrew, you're my man. Send you know. me my money. Yeah, yeah. Um, like 
he'll live up to that promise. You know, at first you got, you know, they can make all the promises they want. You got to get it done. And, uh, you know, uh, so he's the king of chicken in a pot in every pot uh, category. Uh, 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 um, who's this guy, uh, the uh, the guy who's uh, just spending all his own money on the campaign? Uh, Steyer? Steyer. Steyer, yeah. Steyer made the next cut. Yeah. Yeah. So he, he's got enough, you know, uh, which is kind of interesting. You wouldn't uh, you wouldn't think that Tom Steyer had had made it. Uh, but I, it's just it's some, some, how many are there? Still twenty of them? Yeah, roughly. Oh, Pretty yeah. damn close. Jeez, you know, come on, guys. You know, yeah, there's you, a lot of lot of whittling to do. What are you <laughs> in it for? You're not. You can't be in it to win it because you ain't gonna win it. And, uh, you know, but I hate also seeing Biden uh, and uh, 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 what's his name uh, from Vermont, uh, Bernie, Sanders. Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren sucking all the oxygen out of the room, you know, because all the attention is placed on them. I mean, they were in the center last night and they were those people were a, pro, a portion out on that dais based upon their popularity. The people on the very end had the least money, the least uh, followers. Uh, and, you know, shouldn't that have been, like, evened out so that Biden's here and so and so is there? So everybody kind of, you feel that all these people are running. But in the middle, you had this, these people that were sucking the oxygen out of the room. And if, if they, they weren't sucking the oxygen out of the room, the other candidates were by referring to them. Yeah, you know, uh, Warren took the la least hit last night, I think, of anybody, and Bernie didn't even look like he showed up. Yeah, he was kind of quiet. quiet. Yeah, I think his voice was shot. Yeah, From I I heard it in microphone start. Really? Yeah, that, that um, I had read somebody on Facebook today. He did a uh, uh, an analysis of his own of each candidate. And he said one of the things that really bothered him uh, mm -hmm. was it sounded like his microphone was off. That it, not off meaning turned off, but that it wasn't functioning the way that everyone else it was. So it made him sound worse, perhaps, than really he was. But he was he was raspy last night. It almost was like he'd been speaking too much, and his voice was hoarse. You know. Either that or he's got throat cancer. Let's start spreading that rumor. <laughs> How do you feel? You know, uh, 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 Charlie was a big Bernie fan. Yep. Okay. Uh, still am. Are you still? I mean, or uh, yep. if, if you had to vote between uh, Bernie and Elizabeth Warren and Biden, who would you vote for? I'd vote for Warren. Okay. So, so your allegiance to Bernie has kind of waned a little bit in deference to Warren. No, Warren wasn't running in 2016. Oh, okay. All right. If she had run in 2016, I'd have been for her all the way. Bernie was the best of the people that were running. Yeah. Well, how do you feel about Bernie now? I love a lot of his policies. I love a lot of his plans. He's, he's definitely been my kind of liberal for the last 40 years. I've been following his politics in the House and in the yeah, Senate. Well, you know, and I agree, I agree with you on that. I think that what he brings to the to the table is the discussion of certain topics which normally wouldn't be handled uh, because they're too far to the left. You know, I hate it when they yeah. when they say, "Oh, gee, I don't know about Bernie. I don't know about Elizabeth Warren. They're a little too far to the left for people to feel comfortable with." Bullshit. You know. Because I don't know about you, but if somebody says to me, hey, I know you're paying too much in taxes. I want to lower your taxes. I know you need a break in certain areas like health care. I'm going to give it to you. Like, I hear this debate and I go, who are these people that are bothered by single payer health care? Oh, no, I want to have my own doctor. I want to pay thousands of dollars to that doctor and co-pays. Oh, yeah, I want an insurance company to handle my medicine. What? Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Somebody nope. last night at that debate put it right when they said, I think it was Warren. She says, I don't think there's anybody here that likes the insurance companies. 
No. That I agree with what Han, yeah. And like who takes this and who doesn't take that. I don't do you think we'll ever see the day that we all have a basic health plan for free? Well, I mean, ideally we should be getting it now. I mean, we pay enough taxes. That's what we part of what we should be paying for. It'd be like you know. a pleasure cruise. I'm going to go for my colonoscopy, my basic checkup. Oh, I got it for free. I don't have to worry about it. Do you take my insurance? Well, no, but you're not getting it for free. Nobody gets it uh, for no, free. You're paying, no, Everybody yeah, paying. No, we're every actually paying more than if we did pay higher taxes for it because we're paying the fucking insurance companies yeah. all of this. Yeah. And even if, you know, they say, well, you get an insur insurance plan at work. Most people who have an insurance plan at work uh, have to pay for part of that insurance plan. Right. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, I remember in the old days when I first started out in this business, and I would go to a radio station and they would say, oh, and we have a health plan. You would go, hey, wow, that's wonderful that you didn't care. You were too young to get sick, you know, and and uh, uh, but, you, oh, good. I got a health plan. How much is it going to cost me? Nothing. Oh, no, we pay for it. It's no big deal. Oh, and then all of a sudden I come out the other side of the pipe and I'm working at Sirius. And yeah, we have a health plan. By the way, you have to pay like $150 a month into it. Mm -hmm. And I'm going, well, we pay the other two-thirds of it. I go, okay, that, all right, that's wonderful. But what happened to the days when you took care of all of it? And, and now, besides that, and once you got the insurance, you then got the co-pays and you got everything else, you wind up, I mean, even I, who is insured pretty well, uh, my co-pays are... You know, among my various doctors, a couple hundred bucks a month, one way or another. You know, who likes that? Who thinks that's a good idea? You know? And, I hate it, really. Yeah. And so what's so wrong with doing away with insurance companies and allowing the government to somehow pay for your medical care? This is, if, 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 Patrick, I know you're, you're a Republican, but do you, do you like the insurance companies? Well, no, I mean, and I, to answer Tony's question, I believe within the next 10 years, we will have single payer. Oh, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm, I'm serious about that because there are a lot of Republicans that are hearing from constituents that, you know, especially with pre-existing conditions and things like that, that look, you know, um, we, we want this, and it's going to take a while. It's not going to be overnight, but I think it's going to be very similar to Medicare. Um, and, you know, I mean, even Medicare, you're paying to that every month. That's not yeah. given to you. you. You paid into it when you were working, and you're paying into it as you receive yeah. it. You know, so, um, you know, like I've said many times, I don't – I really don't have a problem with it. It's just the taxes mm -hmm. on horseshit for me that just mm -hmm. bother me. American, and, um, American Patriot is on our chat room, who's an idiot, by the way, American Patriot. If you're <laughs> yeah, he's been going on and on. It says, government care is like going to a VA hospital. Well, to begin with, I know people have gone to VA hospitals and say they're terrific. Yeah. Uh, number two, uh, no, this isn't government care we're talking about. We're just talking about the government paying your cost, you know, yeah. and that's taken care of by spending some of your tax money. So maybe maybe you might have to pay a few more pennies in taxes, but it would all be proportionate for everybody, and everybody would pay as we go. I mean, it it's a no-brainer. Do you like your insurance company? No. We hate insurance companies. Do we want to put them out of business? Yes. How do we do it? Single-payer health care. Yes, Patrick. The other thing, that, you know, it's it, it, a mildly good point to say it would be like the VA, but I will say this. The VA, just like any other hospitals in the United States, some are good, some are bad. And, you know, the VA that we have in Milwaukee sucked for many years, and it was revamped new management, mm -hmm. and now it's a world-class facility. And when, I, you know, I'll tell you this, the hospital that I was at when I got paralyzed, I got excellent, excellent care, except the first day that I found out I was paralyzed, I was visited by a doctor. I had just, I had just gotten done with 18 hours of surgery. I wasn't even 
or where did I was paralyzed or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And he walked in doing rounds, and his words to me were, I hope you like being in a wheelchair. You're going to be there the rest of your life. Oh, well, I mean, it, it doesn't matter what hospital or, you know, clinic. There are going to be shitty people that work everywhere. Mm -hmm. yep. I mean, we had hospitals in Milwaukee that I wouldn't stand a fucking rat to. And they're not there anymore. You know why? That the care was so terrible that they shut them down. So it, you know, it, it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but the point is, and again, I go back to American Patriot, who's a moron. He says, you'll be on Medicaid. Good luck. No, we're not talking about Medicaid. We're talking about Medicare, first of all. Secondly, I'm on Medicare. It's terrific. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the only thing terrible about it is it only takes care of 80%, and you got to have a secondary insurance to take care of the other 20%. And luckily, I have SAG-AFTRA, uh, Aetna Insurance, which uh, takes care of the other 20%, and it only costs me $2,000 a year, but it's not costing me. It's costing girlfriend's bosses uh, $2,000 a year. But what I'm saying is, is Medicare is terrific. Okay, what we want is Medicare for all, but 100% Medicare, not this 80% bullshit, all right? And how do we pay for it? Well, you know, we can do some cost cutting. And I, shall I start giving you a couple of examples of where we can cut costs? 51% uh, of your tax dollar goes to the military. We pay more money than any other government in the world for our military. The highest, second highest one is Britain, which has 10% of your tax dollar goes to, uh, uh, goes to the uh, uh, military. It goes to the military. Yeah. Uh, we could cut Actually, back. Actually, it's the top 10. Yeah. We pay more for, than the top 10 below us. Yes. Pay all combined. We pay way too much money for for maintaining a military, especially considering that we do have the technology to n not even have people in the field. <laughs> I mean, you know, all I'm saying is there's one place we can cut money. C cut the military budget in half. I don't think we're going to be any less protected than we are now. But more than that, if you have to pay a few more pennies in taxes because that's going to take care of your medical then so be it, you know? I mean, at least get something for your money. How much money do you pay in taxes every year? And are you getting your money's worth? No, you're not. Because the government should take care of the health of every American. Because it's, the health of a country is part of the well-being of a country. It's as important as the military, you know? So, yeah, if you agree or disagree with me, Patrick, because Patrick kind of gave me a look and I want to make sure that Patrick's giving me a, you know. Yes, Patrick. Well, I, I mean, I have no problem with 50% of the budget going in the military. I mean, if we are going to be the cops of the world and maintain bases all over the world, we need to have the money and we need to have the technology to do that. If, if, if we change our stance in the world and start closing bases and withdrawing from, you know, like Japan or South Korea or something like that. Well, yeah, then it only makes sense to cut the budget because you're not, you don't need mm -hmm. the readiness uh, of the Navy, you know, off the coast of, you know, Japan or wherever it's at in, in the Middle East. Um, because, they, you know, you got a carrier group. You've got how many planes on that carrier? You know, there's a lot of shit that needs to be paid for. And if we're going to continue to be the police force of the world, then we need to pay for it. If we don't want to do that, then we can cut the budget. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, so, uh, you know, I mean, uh, when they, when they, yesterday when they had that whole debate and she said, who here likes their insurance companies? I went, right, you are. And I thought that was the kind of statement she makes. It's so simplistic and so simple. I don't want to say simplistic, it sounds negative, but so simple that everybody can understand that. I don't like my insurance companies. I don't think anybody likes medical insurance companies. They make way too much money. And by the way, one of the reasons they make so much money is that years ago, 
they weren't allowed to make a profit. It was only until, I think, what, Nixon or maybe somebody before that, uh, Nixon, I think, that they were allowed to make a profit. And then all of a sudden, whoo, up go the prices. Those were the days when yep. my radio station said, ah, we'll take care of your health insurance. What the hell? It's no big whoop. Yes, Patrick. One of the things that I'm dealing with right now is I need a new wheelchair. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm allowed to get a new chair every five years. It's been seven years for me. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I have to get reevaluated now to prove that I'm paralyzed. Where oh. that was not something that was done the last several wheelchairs I've had. It was the doctors already know you're paralyzed. They sign off on the sheet and say, you know, here it is. But now the insurance company have changed their parameters. And the company that I go through. Uh, they were telling me that the worst thing that they've run into recently was a quadriplegic, that's somebody that can't use their hands either, mm. or their arms, uh, was denied a wheelchair that they've been in for 20, 20 some years. And they got it straightened out. There was some kind of paperwork snafu, but to be denied something that, you know, it, so yeah, the insurance companies, I don't know that, you know, they know what the hell they're doing half the time anyway. Right, right. Uh, so, you know, I mean, it, it just, it, we, we can tell horror stories constantly, I think, about these things. And, uh, and, and but, but nobody likes the insurance companies, and why should they? There's nothing to say, be said that's good about them. Uh, so anyway, um, let me see here. Um, enough of that. Uh, what's her name? Um, the the wife of Bill Macy, uh, Felicity Huffman. Oh, Huffman. Yeah. Today got sentenced to what is it? A week in uh, th fourteen, 14 days, in, days in jail. In prison. In prison. No, is that a typo? Prison or prison. Uh, in jail? Uh, I, I don't prison think, jail. I don't think they're going to send her to a prison because it would take them longer than 14 days just to go through the administrating of her into the prison where with a jail you I, just go I ah. heard something that they were going to they were going to let her go to Dublin to to serve it which is out here yeah and, and Dublin is a, isn't that a uh, that's a Alameda County jail what isn't I it? Would, what I would say if I were Felicity Huffman was uh, look you convicted me of a a, a felony anyway Okay, so we've got that part taken care of. I'm a felon, all right? If you're only going to give me two weeks, let's get it over with right now. Where do I show up? Let's yeah, just do it. Yeah, that's what I would have done. I would have just gone. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, and, and, and say to your husband, see you in two weeks, dear. You know, I mean, come yeah. on. Who goes to prison for two weeks? You know, They wouldn't <laughs> have had enough time to make her, her miserable. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. She she won't have time to be made somebody's bitch. Okay, yeah. you know <laughs> they would have they would have just got her warmed up and then said, yeah. okay, see you later. <laughs> now I, I, I to be honest with you, I think it's kind of stupid to even give her two weeks because that's so. How can we call it punitive? Is that the term I'm looking for? It's so perfunctory punitive that it doesn't really matter. I mean, what if they gave her just you know and gave her that and gave it to her on. Parole, or I don't know, whatever you know. But yeah, just quadruple or community. Do you think they went? Do you think uh, Patrick? You think they went too easy on her? I think that they they if they wanted to make an example of this type of thing, mm -hmm. she should have been put in for let's say ninety days. That's a reasonable time that doesn't really destroy your life. And, you know, it, it, what is it, a thirty or $50,000 fine she has to pay? Yeah, the, fine, the fine is larger than the money she spent to commit yeah. the crime. Right. right, but you need to make an example of her. So that's fine, but 14 days, you, you may as well just put her on parole. Uh, you know, like, I, like you said. Otherwise, I think 90 days is a reasonable amount of time to make somebody rethink their mm -hmm. especially if they're not you know an addict or something where you know 90 days isn't going to do anything she seemed reasonable enough that if she went in for 90 
Yeah. She'd never fuck up again. Yeah. Well, I mean, but uh, well, you, I, I don't think she's ever going to fuck up again anyway, Patrick. You know who's screwed is, uh, is Lori Lofton. She's going to get rammed. Well, they think she isn't going to. Uh, here, here, here's the reason why, and uh, it it makes a lot of sense. Okay, and that is that uh, Laughlin is going to have the same prosecutor and going to have the same people involved in her case that were involved in the Felicity Huffman case, and their tendency now is to not want a punitive sentence, particularly that. In the case of a case of Laughlin, they spent a half a million dollars yeah. to get their, yeah. to get their brood into college. Okay, and they're fighting and, it, and it's going yeah. to jury. In the case of Felicity Huffman, she spent fifteen thousand dollars, and all she wanted to do was get somebody to fake the SAT test so her kid yeah. would get into college. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, what, uh, how's that any worse than paying the college, you know, a hundred thousand dollars and just having them bypass everything and let your kid in? You know, so I mean, uh, the guy who's person who's guilty is this guy Singer, who's who was doing the whole thing, and and doing all this, all these canards to get these kids into colleges. Uh, the question is, in the case of Felicity Huffman, who in the world did she hurt? Nobody was really hurt by this. In yeah. fact, the kid never got into college. You know, so I mean, what? Uh, no harm, no no foul, no harm. You know, and I, I just, I, and I, plus I like her as an actress, and I think she's done good stuff. And, you know, not hot for her, but I, you know, I think she should. Uh, you know. Yeah, whatever. But uh, you know, this whole the whole concept that uh, oh, there's got to be a penalty. She, Fifteen thousand dollars she put out. She, it's not like she she created this huge uh, bunco scheme that was violating everybody's <laughs> rights. She certainly didn't push anybody out of college by doing it, you know. Um, hell, I'd fake my own SAT scores for crying out loud. Yeah. So, anyway, anybody got something they want to talk about? Anything that you? Oh, uh, Eddie Money died today. Eddie Money died today. Yeah. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Um, um, and. Um, I uh, I always felt about Eddie Money because he was around when I was playing music in San Francisco. Uh, that uh, I couldn't figure out why he was a hit. <laughs> <laughs> and do you remember the time that he got really high and fell asleep on his leg, and it fell asleep so badly they almost had to amputate it? Do you remember that? Uh, I wouldn't be surprised because I've had a few beers with him over at the Long Branch and over at Keystone Berkeley a few times, mm -hmm. and he was pretty wasted. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I mean, but I never really thought he was that good. I I never was a you know big fan of his. So you know the other thing that's going on, there's a guy who they have hired to be on Saturday Night Live as one of their sketch artists. That's not somebody who draws folks. They, they do sketches on the show. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I don't even remember his name right now offhand, but they are now asking that he be t not allowed on the show as a new cast member because of some podcast he did 10 years ago in which he went after the Chinese. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? And the guy is making the claim. He says, I'm a comedian. And when comedians yeah. are trying to be funny, they hit a lot of false notes. He said, if I offended anybody, I'm very, very sorry. But that's one of the false notes I hit, you know? And he didn't apologize. Good for him, you know? Uh, but, I mean, how... They, they're going into everything anybody ever did. I mean, I don't know how I would get a job today if you went back and played some of my shows from uh, from the 1980s, for crying yeah, out loud. Yeah, it's ridiculous. You know? What's going on? Huh? It's like, it's it's almost like the uh, political police, right? Everything has to be perfect. And it's almost like he wants him to be on the show, I guess, but you could only laugh what I give you to say. Don't think for yourself. We know what's best. It's almost like it's you know, crazy. I mean, I, I just hate all this stuff that happens retroactively. You know, he made his jokes in a period yeah, of time yeah. where nobody was looking down on the jokes he was making. 
And now it's not right that you make fun of the Chinese in that manner, okay? I mean, for crying out loud, I'm going to say a word here, and I don't like to use uh, words if I, every time this air conditioner decides to ramp up, it dims the lights. Uh, uh, that, uh, you know, that he supposedly used a term. And I'm going to use that term because I think it's important to the discussion. Uh, and it's a term that Tony has used. Chink? Because <laughs> I see it every time we order Chinese food, we're ordering chinks. That's oh, right. So, that's the big thing. <laughs> column A, column B. Remember yeah. how they talk? I mean, come on already. It's like calling people a guinea. I mean, I can't believe with this is politically correct now. <laughs> I used to say to my friend, your mother hangs sausage in the bathroom. Oh, let me get the fish. Like, police are out. Nobody has a fucking personality anymore. <laughs> well, I mean, so all, I'm, all I'm saying is there's a certain period of time in which things are okay. References mm -hmm. of a sort are okay. But if you're going to go back that far and you then hold somebody to account for what they're saying today, it's a pretty sad state of affairs. And all I'm saying is that if I look back on my, I mean, I don't remember my shows from the 80s because I just don't remember my shows from the 80s. I always, well, I've always remembered the next show. I always look forward to the next day and I never look back. But I imagine there's stuff I did that was, today they would say, don't hire him on Saturday Night Live because he, blah, blah, blah. He had Bobby Slayton on. Bobby Slayton did a thing about Chinese people. You know, oh, Bobby, Bobby was all over that stuff. But isn't it nice to make somebody laugh? You would think if they're sick or down, you'd be like, hey, I watched a funny movie. This guy made me laugh. Or I would think that's a hard thing to do. I, and it's a I, nice I, thing Look, to do. I have such a love for comedy. My feeling is is that if, you, if, if you're going to do something in comedy, you have the right to do anything you feel you want to do. And if it's in bad taste, then people can just say that's in bad taste and I don't want to listen to that joke. But it's a comedian's job... To make you feel better, okay? And he's going to do that in any way he possibly can. And sometimes, in the old days, if he, if Bobby Slayton did stuff about Chinese people, do you ever notice yeah. Chinese people are bad drivers? I mean, come on. Yeah, you that know, is true. Though. Bobby would not to be working today. That's true. <laughs> for me. I don't. But he made you laugh. I, you know, so actually, I got, I got, I got to go get Bobby and have him come on the show. Uh, mm -hmm. I've got to do an interview with him because I want to ask him. <laughs> With all this going on, has he changed his act at all? Yeah, that'd be interesting because he he was he was he would not. I don't think he'd make it nowadays. Oh, the jokes about women? Oh hell no! Uh, the jokes about Chinese? No, oh, like that's Chinese. what I used to love about. And then and then he would do the Chinese accent. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. That would be funny. They're hard to understand, Alex. Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> They are. It's true. Really? He should you know where they're really hard to understand is in Beijing. That's where they're what very he... hard to understand. What is he talking about? What? Because they talk fast and they all love to smoke like fiends. A lot of them. Really? I, I'm telling you, I think they smoke. What like Chinese do you? They can put that mask on all they want. What, they just what, always what, Chinese, what Chinese do you know? At least in my area, what of Chinese in Flu see the, the mask and the husbands. The smoking. Chinese who live in Flushing, which is what we call yeah. Flushing, in Flushing, yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, 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 are not like the Chinese in China. Oh, they're different. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. How are they over there? Huh? Are they different over there or no? Well, they're Chinese. Yeah. But like personality-wise, do you think they get Americanized here maybe or no? I don't know, but don't oh. don't say Chinese are this way or Italians are that way or Jews are this way. Well, That's Ju true. Jews are cheap. But um, And the guineas, are, you got to watch them too, Alex. The yeah, guineas. Yeah, <laughs> the guineas. Especially the ones that are Americanized. I wonder what he does for a living. I know so they, actually, what they're going to do is they're going to take this show and play it and find a way for me not to be able to use YouTube. Okay? So, you know. Uh, uh, you just go back to the old fuck them if they can't take a joke. Well, <laughs> no, that's the way I feel about it, you know. You know? And somebody said that, uh, you know, humor, comedy is the best medicine, and, you know, you wouldn't ask your doctor not to be a doctor. You know, comedians, Absolutely. comedians... In search of a laugh, will say just about anything, and you can't hold it against them. You have to give them a certain license. Yep. You know? 
And there was a time in this country, yes, Jeff. Part of their job is to make you feel uncomfortable. Exactly. Yes. And as a result of feeling uncomfortable, what do you do to feel comfortable? I laugh. You laugh. My, yeah. my father was on his deathbed, and he was still laughing. He said to me, I never forget, he says, you have to laugh at life. We were watching movies still. He was laughing. And you know what? I said, I think people, I think it's the best medicine, really. I mean, that's why I like talking to you guys, because it takes my mind off things, too. Well, and the, I be like well the best medicine is cocaine, maybe pot. But uh, <laughs> outside of that, yeah, it is the best medicine. Really? Yeah. I like to laugh. That's why I like to watch the old movies when you, you know, when you talk about something funny. Yeah. But anyway, you know, so, I mean, uh, I, I just think that, uh, that you know, we just, it, it, the thing that bothers me about all of this is that when I was a kid, they had the House on american Activity Subcommittee hearings, and they said, how are you now or have you ever been a member of the Communist Party? And if you'd been a communist, this was the 50s, right? If you'd been a communist in the 1930s, which a lot of people were because there was a depression that we were coming off of. And a lot of people felt, well, maybe this thing, communism, might solve the problems that capitalism has caused, all right? So a lot of people flirted with it and so on. But now you're in the 50s and you're asking this person, did you used to be a communist? Oh, we have proof you were a communist back in the 30s. Yeah, but I'm not a communist now. Yeah, that's true. You know? you gotta... And to say, hey, you said this in 1980, well, in 1980, nobody was going to put you down for saying it because it was considered okay. And now it's not. You know, just send me a memo on what's fine today and I won't do it. You know? Like say nothing. Show me this guy from Saturday Night Live and show me something he's done in the last couple of weeks against the Chinese. And maybe I'll go along with you. But if he did it 10 years ago, fuck you. You know, the rules have changed, and you can't say that they're retroactive. Yeah. You know. And, and the guy's probably trying to earn a living. I mean, what is he supposed to do? For he wasn't even working for him back then. Yeah. yeah. It's like, yeah, he's probably better so, off Hey, hey Kevin, I haven't asked you. How are your feet doing? Oh, yeah. How's that, how's that pain zapper you got? I was just looking at it. I got to go charge myself. Oh, shit. My battery's low. Your battery's low? Yeah, but how does it work? Is it working for you? Eh, it's doing all right. You know, it's. I got to go get some new programming put in it, and my, my rep decided to leave the company, so I got to find out who my new rep is. Oh, you sound like fucking RoboCop. That's about it, too. <laughs> you know? I feel like it. Yeah. Uh, and, then the, and then they were talking about how the leads might have slipped, so they might have to cut me open and move them up again. So I'm going, ah, crap. <laughs> So I don't know. Yeah, yeah. He, tell tell the audience what you had done, just without without grossing them out. <laughs> well, I just had some wires put up my spine, and then they put a implant in my back so that it would take away some of the pain in my legs. Oh, okay. That's a short the short answer. That's good. Is that what I have to look forward to with my uh, neuropathy? Uh, <laughs> it might help, but it could help. it's helped. You know, I I went. Uh, I think it was last week. I forgot to charge, and I went about two days, and I was going, what the hell's going on? And I had forgotten to charge, and I went, I think, two days without it, and it, it made a difference. So mm -hmm. you could tell that it, it does have a little bit of a difference, and I charged it back up, and I went, okay, yeah, there's something. It, it does work a little well, bit. Well, with so. the neuropathy that I have, it makes the bottom <laughs> of my feet kind of hurt a little bit when I walk. Yeah. And uh, I uh, then took a big, long walk today, a mile and a half, and uh, my feet felt better. You know, yeah. so yeah. I'm and if you keep moving, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna do that every day now. You know, um, but mm -hmm. I, all day long I was spending my time fighting with uh, with uh, Amazon. Uh, oh. Well, I bought these hard drives for my r array, right? And of the four that I bought, three of them have gone bad in just like six months, eight months. Gosh. So I got a hold of them, and they said, well, I only had two of them. So they said, we'll send the two back, and we'll, send, we'll give you some money back. They gave me money back, minus $18 a drive for a restocking fee. Um, nevertheless, I got some money back on it. But what's interesting is, is that I also, last week, I, I sent away for a graphics card, and it didn't work, so I sent it back, and they sent me a new one. 
and that one didn't work in my machine, so I sent it back to them. And I've yet to get anything saying they just received it, that, well, here's your refund. And yet, with these drives, I took the box down to UPS. I get home, and within an hour, I've got a note that they've given me back my money. Yeah. Yeah. I've had that happen, too. Now, they don't do that on everything, it turns out. They didn't do it on the graphics cards, but they, they did it on those. Yeah. yeah, it's like they tell you you don't you're not going to get a credit for a couple of days, and as soon as UPS gets it, they give you the credit. Yeah, and these people, this woman today told me, well, on that traffic's card, it may be a, 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 a ten days to two weeks uh, before uh -huh. you, before you get it. But the thing is, what I hated about Amazon, and I'm getting to hate them more and more every day because I got a different answer last night about the drives, the hard drives that I had to go to Seagate. Today, I got a different answer from Amazon that said, oh, we'll give you some money back, okay? Uh, but in doing all of this, I have to listen to that fucking music on hold. Oh, yeah. And it's the same <laughs> music every time. Now, you figure if they've got an Amazon Prime music, right, they could play some different songs to you. But no, yeah, like when you call Apple, you can choose your music. Oh, can you really? <laughs> Yeah, they say, do you want to listen to pop or jazz or the shitty music or no music? Oh, I mean, and the worst, the worst, however, what was it? What was the company I used to call all the time that had the worst music on hold? And they, people even made a joke out of it. You could actually find it online, and I'm trying to remember who it was now. But Yeah, there's there's a couple of generic ones that are on almost every hold that you you call. And yeah, yeah. But I think I, we used to have it at where I worked and I went, it, oh my god it, it was it was just it was it was horrible just horrible but anyway so I uh uh so I I it got stuck with this on hold music and the, it has a little glitch in it so that you think that when that glitch hits that somebody's yeah. answering the phone and then no like, hello, it's, hello, it's, hello? It's, it's just going it just oh, keeps going on getting disconnected yeah yeah but anyway so I, I you know I I I and I finally found my third drive that went out, so I'm going to call Seagate and see if they'll give me a new drive for that. So, whatever, you know. Dang. But, but what's with all these drives going on me? Anyway, uh, well, it's another. We have another minute and a half here, uh, so I could wish you all a good weekend. Uh, Patrick, going to do anything interesting this weekend? Uh, no, actually, just. I read, supposed to be reasonably decent outside, so mm -hmm. I'll sit outside and read. Oh, okay. I thought maybe you were going to go dancing or something like that. Yeah. I could do that, but, uh, you know, I'd take up more on the dance floor than anybody else would want. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie, good having you here this evening. Uh, anything up for Charlie yeah. this weekend? Yeah, I'm working on a project. What Can't tell anybody about it yet for another week and a half. What do you mean you're working on a project? Well, that's all I can say right now. You're working Ooh. on a project. Oh, okay. Is it a little money-making project? Yes and no. Okay, <laughs> so really what you're going to do is a podcast. Okay, uh, Kevin? <laughs> <laughs> what are you up to this weekend, Santa? Uh, nothing. I'm going to hang out. I've been doing too much lately. Oh, really? Okay. All right. Yep. Uh, uh, Jeff, what are you up to this weekend? I got two things. I'm getting all loaded to go on vacation. Uh huh. So yeah. I'm packing up to see what the heck I got to take with me. Yeah. Yeah. So um, then tomorrow, effectively, I'm going to go see my number one son and, mm -hmm. and his wife and just go up to Connecticut and look around and look how beautiful it is today. And of course, Tony, what are you going to do this weekend? I'm you're going to wipe. You're going to gonna wipe your mom's spit, right? Um, I'm going to Stop and Shop tomorrow. Going to Stop and Shop. Oh, yes. mm -hmm. so you got the shopping list. And what do you I'm plan to do? Buzz. Stop and Shop. Yeah. That's it. Can anyway. we get a Starbucks on the way out? They have a little Starbucks. Hey, I thank you all for joining us, Jeff, uh, 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 Patrick, uh, Tony, uh, Kevin, uh, Charlie. It's been a nice evening. Nice having you here. Now, I guess you're not going to be here next week, right, uh, Jeff? No, I'll be here next week. It's 
It's the week after. Oh, it's the week uh, after. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, yeah. uh, so we'll see you next week. Hey, uh, everybody, why don't you give a big, like, wave goodbye to the audience out there, and I'll wave back at you, too. Isn't that fine? Okay, that's it. There they go, ladies and gentlemen. Let me hang up on them uh, so that uh, we can make the lines available for the next program, which is the intersection with Jack Bishop. You might want to give him a call. Uh, anyway, uh, I uh, will see you. Uh, let's see, I'm, I'm, we're gone for the next couple of days. We'll be back again on Tuesday, right after uh, Damian Chaplin is here with the exchange at uh, 9:30 Eastern Daylight Time. We'll be here again at 10 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time, same time, and same. They go the lights dimming again. Same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her. Mm, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody.